These days, leech therapy has gone full circle. It is now mainstream. It is in every major hospital in the world. It is no longer relegated to the field of quackery. But neither should it be regulated to the point where this traditional form of therapy that has been practiced by the village wise woman for thousands of years be taken away from people who have a right to determine what they do with their own health. The modern medical profession is only just relearning many of its grandmother's old tricks that worked very well. Remember, hygiene was not accepted as necessary by the modern medical profession until the very late 1800s, thanks to Louis Pasteur, who was able to prove the existence of germs. Previous to that, the village wise woman said that things had to be cleaned, the water had to be boiled, the floor had to be swept, the sheets had to be washed. Hygiene was seen as a pagan practice originating with Pythagoras, whose main goddess was Hygieia, or cleanliness, hygiene. Don't be stupid, laughed the doctors. How can anything that you can't see hurt you? Right? They're just evil spirits. They're not real. But today we know that germs kill. The wise women knew it all along. Today, with leech therapy, the wise women have always known the healing powers that are in the Harudin, or the exchange of fluids that come from leech therapy. Today we'd like to show you one case study of Mr. Ken Wills who suffers from high blood pressure. Systolic pressure 175 mm of mercury. Systolic pressure 111 mm of mercury. Heart rate 80 beats per minute. According to WHO guidelines, your blood pressure shows severe hypertension. Of course, everybody's going to ask why you're not taking blood pressure medication. Do you want to explain to people what was happening with the blood pressure medication? Um, it was making me feel dizzy uh, when I bent over and thought I was going to fall over all the time. It had a side effect, so I haven't been taking it. You see, this morning I was wanting to rush you to the doctor, but we thought we'd sit down and do the Harudin therapy first. I think the leech's work is, as you can see these veins, these veins come to the surface when we have blockages, right, and they have to find another way around with the blood. So they're actually an indication that something's jamming up our bloodways, right. So what's happening when you're smoking and not doing any exercise, your bloodways are jamming up. And you can tell this because like I get varicose veins on the legs, you're getting these veins and the redness on your face, right? So that is an indication that you have severe hypertension, as it said. So with the leeches, what we're going to do is put some herudin, which is an anticoagulant, into your blood. And it will allow the blockages in your bloodstream to start to clear out, right? And hopefully lower, lower your blood pressure. So we'll put two leeches on you and then we'll put one on each arm and then we'll do it again and we'll see how your hypertension is in an hour after doing some Harudin therapy which is leech therapy. Okay? Okay. Our protocol. And what we're going to do is clean the arm with a little bit of peroxide and wipe it dry and then we're going to use the cotton buds to do that. When handling the leeches I'll put rubber gloves on because they won't bite through and we've got two Australian leeches, two Australian land leeches in the syringe. Right, and then we'll put them on the cleaned area. The leeches themselves have been cleaned and washed. As you can see, it's wet inside there. They're quite easy to get into the syringe. They crawl in there themselves. And you just direct them in that way. Okay, so we don't want to put the leeches on the main artery because they put in anticoagulant. And if you have anticoagulant on the main artery, we're going to end up with what's technically known as a spurter. Right, so we're just going to clean an area here. Like that. So we're just going to clean an area with some peroxide. So it's just 3% peroxide. Once it's clean, we wipe that with a clean cotton cloth. Now, some peroxide, because we don't, the only negative thing with the Harudin therapy is risk of infection. And the risk of infection is generally from the germs that are already on the client's skin. So you clean off the skin. Leeches themselves have antibacterial qualities in them. They have um, antibacterial, antiviral stuff 
in their saliva that goes into the person. You know, so the harudin actually contains lots and lots of different chemicals, not just anticoagulant. So the leeches themselves, as long as they're clean and haven't bitten anybody for before, and so as you can see, these are tiny baby ones. The new hatchlings we got them from the rainforest this this um, just a couple of days ago. So they haven't bitten anybody yet. You can tell because they're tiny, and we'll show you the difference with ones once they're uh, fed on Ken. They'll be much bigger. In order to encourage the leeches to bite, we do have to. Uh, sometimes just draw a little bit of blood on the area, otherwise, especially new baby leeches. Don't know, this is a needle roller, so I'm just going to sterilize that with some alcohol and we'll just make a little tiny mark on Ken's skin with the roller uh, and then we'll apply the leech and you'll see the leech will get excited and go for the blood. These needle rollers are actually used for skin tightening after dramatic weight loss. So, oh, but we're not using that for that today. Today we're just going to prickle Ken's skin. So, let's go to that spot on his arm that we've already cleaned. Right. Now you just tell me if this hurts too much, Ken. The idea is just to bring a little bit of blood to the surface. Easy, mate. Alright, done. So is that looking a little bit bloody there? <laughs> We're just being like typical male big baby today. Do we have a more intense one? So let's see, we'll just do a little, little puncture with this one. You have no blood. Ken's got thick skin, mate. There we go. I think we've got a little bit of blood coming to the surface oh, now. Just, just so now, we can't have the alcohol there because the alcohol will kill the leeches. So again, we clean the area with peroxide. Right, it's only 3%. So let's wipe the skin off with that. Wipe the skin dry with a clean cotton cloth. Have you got a little bit of blood coming to the yes. surface there? Good. Yeah. Alright, so this little guy looks like he's attaching now. Alright, can you feel anything there, Ken? No. See, they're actually quite painless when they start to attach. You have to leave them a minute because they have an interior sucker on their bottom, on their bottom end. So if you've got to let them get embedded before you try and remove the syringe. And it's also a good idea to have um, a small um, prodder that you can actually slide their anterior sucker down with so you're not going to stretch them and pull them back off your client. So I still can't feel anything, Ken? Maybe. A little tingle, maybe. Yeah. yeah. So he's starting to do his job. Yes, it does look like leeches and humans are supposed to have a symbiotic relationship. The leeches are cleaning out the uh, rubbish that's in the bloodstream and they take away the dirty lymph as well. And so this is not, as is often called, um, a bloodletting. What, what the leeches are actually doing is exchanging. They're taking what they need to live, they only feed um, they can feed only once every six months and if you have your own leeches and you're not using them with anybody else you can feed them once a month or so but they won't have a very big feed um, and in exchange for what you're, the nourishment you're giving them in return they are actually cleaning your venal system they're cleaning out the veins they're um, putting their hirudin in will take away any of the blockages and the sluggishness that you have in your circulation system. All right, so it is a really nice reciprocal relationship that we can have with them. Um, they are very surprisingly clean creatures. A lot of people think that leeches are very dirty, but if you do use a leech, 
Um, it should never ever be used with anybody else. Oh, looks like the, his mate's going to go down there and have a go with him. Quite often when you get one leech feeding, the, another one will come down beside it and want to feed as well. Now can you feel the other one logging in there, Ken? Is mm. he starting to tingle? So you're going to have a <clears throat> double dose of erudin in one spot. I would have preferred to put that other one in another spot on your other arm. Um, but we may yet put another one on your other arm. Ken, hold that. Now, can you lift up the syringe, please, Ken? So, so we've got one attached. Now one isn't. So what we're going to try and do is get him out of there. All right. Now I might pass the camera over to Ken, and I might hold the syringe myself. Don't pull too hard, Ken. Sometimes leeches will feed off each other, and I'm just hoping that's not what's happening here. Oh no, they're both on. Oh, one pulled out. What happens if you pull them too hard? But even though he's pulled out, Ken's still got, oh, there we go. Ken's still got the best of um, what's supposed to happen. So, he's still got the, the Harudin in there. So, as we can see, even though he's only just started feeding, you can see he's getting bigger already. So this little guy, let's see what he will do. We'll just clean Ken's other arm and we'll see if we can get him on the other arm. Reach number two. Starting to attach himself to this Ken's second arm which has been cleaned and prepared. So we'll just let him get attached. Once he's attached then we'll start to remove that syringe. So there we can see that Ken has the second one is attached to his second arm. With the second one attached to his first arm, we are getting a little bit of blood loss. So we will clean that up as best we can. We cannot use any harsh disinfectants around the leech while it's on there because it will kill the leech and it can make the leech throw up. And you don't want that to happen in your system either. So we're just going to wipe that away with clean water. So we'll do that in a minute. We cannot emphasize how important it is to be prepared and keep all of your gear clean right, and sterilized. That is alcohol. We've only used peroxide to clean Ken's arm. That's a little bit of clean cotton that we've just used to wipe the second bite on the first arm. Um, a dental tool that we use as a product to get the leeches out of the large syringe. And let's keep everything clean. I have seen on the internet some horrific hygiene practices. We are outside. I don't believe in working inside on a, on a nice day. Outside is nice and fresh and healthy. It also gives the client a very nice outlook. As you can see, we're, we're outside in a really nice area. So, there you go. So, Kent, just tell me. Tell me what you're feeling. Nothing. A slight tingling, that's about it. Yeah. Um, can you tell me about the last time you did the Harudin therapy and the result that you got with two leeches? Uh, you were t doing the Harudin therapy for high blood pressure? Yes. Right. And how high was your high blood pressure the last time you did the Harudin therapy? Not quite as high as it is today, yeah. but it did lower at 20 points. Okay, so hopefully we'll, we'll get at least that again today. So we will check Ken's blood pressure after the leeches come off. Now these little guys, as you can see, they're getting quite significantly bigger already. So uh, once these little guys drop off, um, we will then clean up Ken and we will check his blood pressure again. All right. um, it does have quite dramatic effects quite quickly and quite long lasting as well. So the protocol that we're going to hopefully put Ken on though is we might have two leeches every second day for a while and then we will check his blood pressure at the end of the week. So we've cleaned up that arm for Ken and you can see he's curled up there. They actually, when they're feeding, they try and put their anterior sucker close to their front sucker and they curl up into a little ball that just gets bigger and bigger. I don't know if you can see it, but the Australian land leech is quite pretty. He has lots of little markings on him. I don't think we're going to be able to focus because of the reflection because he's moist. Uh, as he feeds 
he gets moist so he takes some of the, the lymph out of the system. You can see him secreting Ken's lymph fluid there around him. So, and he's having quite a happy little feed at the moment. But he's getting significantly bigger. And there's his little friend that started about 15 minutes after he did. So these guys should continue to feed for about an hour and then they will just drop off onto the town. Alright, um, you have to dispose of leeches once they have fed on you. They must not be allowed to be used for anybody else. But seeing as how uh, Ken is going to use these leeches just for himself and he's going to keep them for himself, then uh, there's no risk of them passing any infection from person to person. And Ken can keep them himself and he can allow them to feed every one or two months but you will have to keep them separate to the leeches that have not fed because the leeches that have not fed will actually feed on the engorged leeches and kill them so there's Ken just sitting there he's um, been doing a bit of reading and a couple of other things while he's sitting there now, how are you feeling Mr Wills? good right. So can you feel any discomfort with the leeches? No darling, I cannot. For the camera, for the video. There, there is no there is no sensation as far as I'm concerned. I have very thick skin, but I can feel nothing. You feel nothing? I can't even feel them on there. Yeah. Right. Do you feel disgusted, you know, having leeches on you and eating or uh, no, I feel fine about it. You've had, I mean, you're an experienced Australian bushman. Have you had leeches on you before in the bush? No, as a matter of fact, I... Ken just got up to make himself a cup of coffee, and as he was doing so, this little guy just let loose. That was the second one that we put in. So we just don't want Ken to, to bleed too much. So I'll pick him up and put him in with the fed leeches. But as you can see, the first leech is still going, and he's getting quite big there. Now this guy... <laughs> He's like, oh, I'm on this cloth, I don't like it. He's so fat now. If we clean the wound straight away with peroxide, there's almost zero chance of any infection. So the wound itself is self-cleaning in that it's going to bleed. <coughs> so it will keep bleeding for a while. Oh, you're hot-blooded. It's quite warm. Has that peroxide gone warm on your skin? Has it gone warm on your skin? Yes, darling. It, it fizzing it feels and feels warm. Yeah, we're having a what's called a catalytic reaction with the blood, right? So the peroxide is actually fizzing up and reacting with the, the blood. So, um, so the peroxide does lessen the amount of blood loss, but it's not bad for it to bleed. So I'm going to leave this um, piece of tissue here for Ken, and he can just keep dabbing that on. And we're not going to put that peroxide, obviously, on this leech that's still there because it would kill him. So, he's just showing us the little bite. So, it's probably just a little bit bigger than a mosquito bite. Can you turn that arm a bit more towards the light? That's good. Yeah, and Ken has done her root therapy before, and it doesn't leave a mark. It goes down, I think, no mark at all within two weeks. As you can see, peroxide significantly slows the blood loss rate, but it will still flow. So we have got some more tissue there to catch the drips. Um, after the second leech has fallen off, we will put a small cotton pad, cotton ball, with a little um, band-aid over each one. Just as if, same way that you'd get a little band-aid if you had an injection. Essentially this is nature's perfect hypodermic uh, leeches are a symbiotic creature there's three areas of human health that we have to maintain uh, and one essential one is our circulation it's surprising the number of health problems that arise in western medicine because the circulation is not maintained yeah, so while Ken's waiting for leech number one to drop off leech number two has dropped off and Ken's just dabbing his arm as you can see Blood loss is only a minimum. Um, it is annoying because it can go on for about 12 hours. 
So we're just going to put a little band-aid spot on there when he's finished and that will stop it being an inconvenience. Mm. Do you feel inconvenience, Mr Wills? No, darling. It's dropped off about five minutes ago and the blood's sort of slowly... Slowing? Stopping. Mm -hmm. Stopping. Yeah. And uh, how long was he on there for? About half an hour? Around about half an hour. Usually they stay on for about an hour. So he was only a little, little baby leech. So maybe he just had enough. And this guy's still happily chewing away. <clears throat> they chew their way in. They've got um, Australian um, land leeches. Only ha they have two jaws compared to the European leech, which has three jaws and leaves a Y-shaped mark. These guys only have two jaws, so they do have to bite their way into the skin. Uh, but um, they make far less damage than what the European water leech does. So it would be very interesting to compare the two. Ken's just said he felt some movement with this leech, so maybe he might be getting ready to pull out of the skin. He may have just got to the point where he's so full he can't be curled up into a little ball anymore. There he goes, and he's dropped off. Oh. There we go. He's not used to the environment of the town. Alright, so I'll just transfer that bit of tissue over there. Let's pick this guy up. I'll put him in with the fed leeches. Ken is going to keep his fed leeches so he can use them again. Saves him going into the bush and trying to find more. But now you can see the significant size difference between the two. So again, clean, 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 cleaning with a little bit of peroxide, minimise the blood loss, we actually want to keep the herudin in there, not let it bleed all, back, all the way back out. As you can see, the, the size of what they call the wound from the two different leeches is significantly smaller than the European leech. Right, this is hardly a pinprick size hole. The Australian leech makes its head very, very small, almost to the size of a the pore in the skin before it starts to burrow in. So I'll just leave that there for a minute. Just wipe that dry. So that was peroxide. Just a little bit of pressure with some dry paper towel. Right. So just we can show what we're doing here still. We're just going to make a, a little ball with some cotton wool. Just put the cotton ball on there. We finish up with a band-aid. Oh, what's happened there? Oh, these are those really thin ones. Band-Aids and rubber gloves. <laughs> okay, so I will put the, the band-aid on as tight as possible. I'm going to take my glove off to do that. Because um, the tighter you're on, the more pressure there is, the less likelihood there is of any leakage. So we don't want Mr. Wills to put, get it all over his shirt when he puts his shirt back on. So I'll just tuck that in. And he really only needs to leave that on there till, well, I probably leave it on overnight just to be sure. Right. All right, so that's how we simply do the Australian leech protocol. Always keep it clean, 
Um, but definitely no reason for leeches to be registered as uh, medical instruments. This is a traditional therapy. This is, uh, you know, every old witch in Europe used to practice this. Right? Uh, leeches haven't killed anybody. The only risk we have at all is of a secondary infection. So if you keep it clean, there is no need for risk of a secondary infection. And I'm not doing anything that any mother wouldn't do when she puts a Band-Aid on her own child. Just clean the wound, put a Band-Aid on. Right? If, if you encounter a, a leech in the bush, you're not going to rush to the doctor and, and go, oh my goodness, I have a medical instrument on me. No, the leech is removed, the area is cleaned, and you put a Band-Aid on it. And that's all we're doing here. We're doing what happens absolutely naturally. You cannot register something that is natural as a medical implement. This is a therapy that needs to be kept public so that people need to learn how to do it so that they can treat themselves. And we can alleviate all sorts of cardiovascular ailments almost completely out of our society like they were in Middle Europe 200 years ago before leech therapy stopped. Anyway, this is Shada Monford, and uh, yeah, join me again and we'll have another look at some more Harudin therapy and other traditional therapies that you can do at home for yourself and start to take control of your own health. If something serious arises, always go and see a registered medical practitioner, but there is lots of things you can do at home for yourself that can make you in control of your own personal health, and that's what we're aiming for here. Pressure 175 mm of mercury. Diastolic pressure 105 mm of mercury. Heart rate 77 beats per minute. According to WHO, get lines your blood pressure shows moderate hypertension. Alright, so Wilsey, you've gone from being severe to moderate with one Harudin treatment within a half an hour. So we're going to keep that up and do it tomorrow? Within 10 minutes. That's like only 10 minutes. So... Baby, within 10 minutes. We've done a half an hour's worth of therapy here. I understand that, but that the leeches only fell off like 10 minutes ago. Yeah. So, yeah, let's test it again in a couple of hours' time. Okay, good plan. So this is about an hour later, so there's a significant drop in the blood pressure. So Kent, so it's been about an hour since we've done the Harudin therapy with you with the leeches. We've just seen that there's a significant improvement. Um, of course everybody's going to ask why you're not taking blood pressure medication. Do you want to explain to people what was happening with the blood pressure medication? Um, it was making me feel dizzy. Uh, when I bent over and thought I was going to fall over all the time, it had a side effect, so I haven't been taking it. Mm -hmm. All right, and uh, are you happy with this result? I mean, obviously this morning I was wanting to rush you to the doctor, but we thought we'd sit down and do the Harudin therapy first, and we've had both a drop <laughs> of... Um, oh, well, Ten points in each, just yeah, about. Yeah, or probably a bit more than the, in the diastolic. Um, so it's a significant drop. Um, are you happy? Does it make you feel better about yourself? I mean, were you feeling like you had high blood pressure this morning? The thing about high blood pressure, there are no symptoms. But your heart is beating faster and your pressure, and it can cause stroke and heart attack. But you might feel fine. Yeah. Now, against my advice, even since you've done the Harudin therapy, you've had a couple of cigarettes, you've had a couple of cups of coffee, and that's still, uh, I would have preferred it be completely uninterfered with, with no cigarettes and no coffee. But even though you've had cigarettes and coffee, the blood pressure is still down. Um, well, yes, it is. The time and date's on there, on the, on the bottom of the monitor. So yeah. we'll test it again in a couple of hours' time. Yeah, I think it'll be down again. How many cigarettes have you had since you did the... Uh, oh, a couple. A, a couple? 
probably two and, two and a couple of cups of coffee. And do you think that we would have got an even better reading if you hadn't had the cigarettes and the coffee? Well, that's debatable because if I hadn't had the cigarettes and the coffee, my blood pressure probably would have gone down by itself. But having the treatment and still doing what I'm doing, it has dropped significantly and it's only been an hour. So to for me to really say that it's working, I'd probably have to do it a couple more times. Mm -hmm. okay. And we'll see how it goes. Okay. So, Mr. Wills, you just took your blood pressure again. Oh, do you want to tell us? Well, it's now 146 over 85. Right, and is that in an acceptable level or is that still a little bit high? No, that's in a lower level. That's acceptable. Right, and um, how many hours has this been since your hurrigan therapy? Uh, it's been about four, I guess, four hours. Excellent. So, I mean, I would advise you to stop drinking coffee, stop smoking, uh, which will give you the best, quickest effect as well. But regardless, keep the leech therapy up, okay? Good boy. Thank you.